All right, Shalom. 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 First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakatodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth, especially in this time that we're in right now. Okay, um, we're going to do a lesson. Don't really know how long it plans on being, but it's ultimately going to be through the Spirit. But um, within this lesson here, we're going to touch up on the rich in this in the low place. And we're going to read the scripture in Ecclesiastes 10. But we're going to touch up on this low place and goes to show you that this low place represents captivity. All right. And where we are in captivity, man. All right. And the, the things that we see that makes this place so low, you know. So um, without any uh, further ado. We're going to read in Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, and we're going to start at the 5th verse. I'll get it. Okay, come on, come on. Ecclesiastes 10 and 5, it says, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. All right, and an error proceeds from the ruler. All right, so there's wickedness that you see. Come come There's wickedness that you see under the sun. Okay, and when you go into under the sun, it's talking about the planet Earth. That's right. Okay, but it says an error from the ruler. Matter of fact, I got a quick precept. Somebody can if get I may. Proverbs That's exactly what I was pulling. Okay. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's the spirit, bro. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And we see the state of mourning that everybody's in right now, man. All right. And you can really start that mourning off with the so called Negro, Latino, and Native American. All right. Because we are still in captivity. We're just in a predicament right now where this devil's ruling and he's willing to put his own people in captivity just to keep us in this low state, you know. But again, as the scriptures say in Proverbs 29 and 2, as it was just read, going into when the ruler, when the wicked are in power, all right, the people mourning. Right. And that's what we're seeing right now. And that's that error that King Solomon was alluding to in Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter. Right. Okay. Right. Because so is the ruler, so are the people. That's so right. He said, I've seen an error from the ruler. Go ahead. Everything's broken down the way that it is because of the rulership that's in power right now. That's right. Oh, we start at the top? Yeah, absolutely. That's right, bro. Absolutely. Calm. Uh, so rap, chapter 10, starting at the top. A wise judge will instruct his people. In the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Mm -hmm. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. Right. In what that's manner good. of man the ruler of the... So Esau's pretty much setting a bad example for the citizens of his society, man. That's why everybody has a do as thou wilt spirit of decadence. It's just free fall mode, mm -hmm. man. That's There's right. no regard, no uh, standard of honor, humility, mm -hmm. integrity, dignity, mm -hmm. respect, loyalty. All of the things that should be uh, embedded within the grain of society, right? And the mm -hmm. movements of how people should operate amongst one another. That's right. Go ahead. Bottom of uh, Sirach, uh, chapter uh, You can just read to like four. Yeah. Kind of. And then we'll jump back. The city is such are all they that dwell therein. Uh -huh. An unwise king destroyed his people. Right. An unwise king destroyed his people. That's why people mourn it, man, because there's no righteous rulership and power to make it an even playing field. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's something called uh, a, a wealth uh, disparity, man. To, right now, we're in a time where there's no such thing as a middle class. Right. It's pretty much... Those who have wealth and then everybody else is just finna be on the same level. Mm -hmm. That's how it is in the scriptures. Right. Ain't no middle class in the scriptures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, real right, talk. Right. That's the real talk. Yeah. yeah, that's right, bro. But that all kind of is the sentiment of the lesson. The rich, we sit in low places. That's even right, the, the Lord, he set us up to be rich, but we don't even mm -hmm. play and feel with everybody else. That's right, And bro. even Solomon said he perceived that was all vanity and vexation of spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 3 again. An unwise king destroyed his people, mm -hmm. but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Right. Through the prudence of them which are in authority, the, sh the city shall be inhabited. And that started with the Most High's elect, that, that government that's under Yahweh Shah that's going to rule in righteousness, man. Mm -hmm. Under the standard of the laws, uh, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. Go ahead. The fourth verse. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Right. And in due time, he will set over it. One that is profitable. Right. The power to, of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. So Esau is not ruling according to his own will. The That's Lord right. set us That's up right. as really this is our, our, our punishment right now for mm -hmm. going off, man. Having the, the wicked rulership set up over us right now. But this is only for an appointed time. And in due time, the Lord is going to set up the people who are profitable to rule the earth. That's right. Bro. So we can just go back into this and then. Come, come. 
beautiful but, points kind of now you can just kind of go from here this is uh ecclesiastes 10 and 5 it says there's an evil which i've seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler mm -hmm. folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place all right so it says folly is set in great dignity all right and what does folly allude to it alludes to foolishness all right and childlikeness all right jestership you know what i'm saying and that's what you see out here everything that's deemed Good in the society is contrary to the Heavenly Father and what he ultimately wants. It's esteemed on high. Okay, and what else does it say? It says the rich sit in a low place. Now, somebody can pull up a Revelation, the third chapter, Baba Kishaw, so we can go into who that rich is talking about. Okay. Okay. Khan. Khan, Baba Kishaw. It's talking about the Israelites, namely the, namely the, the elect out of Israel, those that are pushing the word. Okay, but really, ultimately, Israel... He is a prince of the power. Us as a nation are in a low place right now. Okay. You talking Revelation 2 and 9 or something in 3? Yeah, you can read it in either or. They both pretty much. Okay. Revelation 2 and 9 is fine. Oh, what one you wanted in 3? Huh? You said you wanted uh, chapter 3? Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant it's 2 and 9. I was thinking about 2 and 9. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. My bad. I was thinking synagogue of Satan. You know, that's in Revelation 2 and 3. Yep, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. <clears throat> I know thy works in tribulation and poverty... But thou art rich. But thou art rich. Okay. And I mean, of course, this was spoken. This is spoken unto um, the churches. When you read Revelation, the second chapter and read Revelation, the third chapter, there were specific letters that Yahweh Shah had John the Revelator write and send them out to the churches. And just as those were sent out to the churches, that applies us to this day because we're the churches here in these modern days. And best believe those churches were full of Israelites, man. Those different churches that were scattered in Asia Minor were Gentile he was talking about, man. He's talking about Israelites, okay? The reason why you know he's talking about the Israelites because there's numerous scriptures that goes into us being brought in captivity, being rich but being poor, okay? And that was pretty much the point on that one that I wanted, okay? But earlier it said, folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in a low place, now, to show that it's talking about us going, being in captivity, being in a low state, if uh, somebody could pull up Ezekiel, the 17th chapter, and start from the top. And this is a parable that Ezekiel is speaking as pertaining to the children of Israel getting brought into the land of captivity, all right, and the judgment that had happened unto our kings, all right? Namely, when you read it in Ezekiel, the 17th chapter, it goes to the judgment given to Zedekiah. But when you go into the beginning of it, it goes how we were taken and brought low into captivity, okay? Whoever has it. I got it, bro. Come Ezekiel chapter 17, starting at the top. <clears throat> and the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. When you go into that word riddle, that's exactly what it means, a parable. Okay? And the scriptures say, in Amos the third chapter, the Lord revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? So it's only meant for us to understand this word anyway, man. Okay? Ezekiel being a prophet, he was meant to understand that. Okay, and he was said to put forth the riddle. That way, those that were meant to hear were going to be able to receive it. And those that weren't, they were going to be blinded. Okay, you got it. Continue? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, a great eagle with great wings, long-winded, full of feathers, which had diverse colors, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. All right, went on to Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. Okay, now namely when you go into that highest branch, that's really talking about us. And that eagle ultimately is going into the king of Babylon. Okay, and when you look at the modern day eagle right now, you read about it in Obadiah. All right, you can, allay, you can um, allude that to Esau Edom. Okay, but as it came and it took that branch from the highest tree, where that highest tree it's talking about. Okay, we were in a period of time, especially when David and Solomon was ruling, where we were at the height of everything. Okay, but through constant rebellion to the Heavenly Father, he had, sent, he had sent nations out to get us. Okay, and the first nation that he had taken to destroy us after we had a rulership was the Babylonians. Well, namely, really, we can say the Assyrians. Okay, but they didn't destroy the whole nation of Israel. They just took, took the northern kingdom, you know. But when you go into Babylon, that's where they took the southern kingdom. So I'd rather word it like that. Okay, go ahead. He cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into a land of traffic. A land of traffic. Okay, and what's that land of traffic and alluding to? When you go into traffic, it means selling of merchandise. All right, merchant city. Just like Babylon. Babylon was known as a golden cup back in the ancient world. You have modern-day Babylon, America. 
Everybody flocks to this place. And most definitely, Edomites came over to Western Africa, had taken us and placed us over here in this land of traffic. Okay? Now, within this lesson, it's going into the rich sitting in a low place. So, if somebody can buy, or I can do it, it don't matter, but pull up that word traffic in the blue letter, Baba Kishon. I'll just add this to you when you have a precept Bible it says here in the, in the margin, it says trade. And like he went to, this is a merchant city. Mm -hmm. What they do on Wall Street. That's right. Trade stocks, but when you look, even look up your the number on your birth certificate, your number shows up there. Mm -hmm. So represent we're in slavery as well. That that's right. Traded stock, you know. That's right. Beautiful point, bro. All right, and I got that. Unless you know, I, you already got it. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, if you want to, if no, no, I don't got it yet. Okay, when you go into that word traffic there in the Hebrew, that word there is kanaim. All right, kanaim, where you get the word Canaan from. OK, now, does that mean that we were taken into the land of Canaan? Absolutely not. But when you go into the word Canaan, what does that word Canaan means? Low land. Low land. Right. OK, and we were brought into this place. I mean, there is a bunch of different aliases that Mystery Babylon goes by, which is America. All right. There's times scriptures considers it being Babylon. Mm -hmm. Times it's considered to be Tyrus, Assyria, Assyria Nineveh. Nineveh, you know, and Canaan's another name for it. Because it's just a low land at the end of the day. And this is a very low place that we're in. Right. Basically, all of the certain empires that the Most High set up and then he brought down. He brought mm -hmm. low. America's about to be brought low, man. That's right. You know? That's right, bro. And then even going into the morals, everything that's deemed high, it's very satanic here, man. It's very low. Matter of fact, um, Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 19, verse 17. Baba Kishaw. I got you. Is that 1917? Come, come. Just to show how low this place actually is, man. And we were brought here and subject unto this place, man. The Lord brought us down, bro. All right. Ezekiel 17 said we sat at the top, man. And he had taken us and brought us into this low place where we had to serve these dusty, grimy, red niggas. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Isaiah chapter 19, verse 17. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid of himself. I'm sorry, 15. Salaki, a mingled okay. a perverse spirit. My bad. I okay. Think that's in 15. Uh, verse 14. Okay. Uh, verse 14. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. Now, right here, it's talking about Egypt, man. But again, as it was explained earlier, all right, America goes by a bunch of different aliases in the last days. All right. And the reason why I use these different nations. I write as an alias to Mystery Babylon because these were nations that had status. They had power and they were big on trade as we were going into traffic. Okay, a low land. Okay, but it says what? The Lord had mingled a perverse spirit in the midst of Egypt. And when you go into that word perverse right there within that scripture, it goes into ceremonially. It goes into what well, says religiously, but we know that goes into spiritually. Okay, sexually. Everything that has to do with America that's esteemed high is completely variants with the Heavenly Father. And it's been a satanic spirit mingled in this place, man. And we were brought low unto this place. Okay? We read it earlier in Ecclesiastes 10. It says, folly is set in great dignity. Reason why? Because it's a perverse spirit in the midst of this place. I got a precept. Come on, Bubba Kassar, bro. You just said folly is set in great dignity and it's a per perverse spirit all due to the ruler. Come. And folly, when you break that down, it comes from being foolish, mm -hmm. being a fool. This that's is right. Psalms 14 and 1. It says, the fool have said in his heart, Ooh. there is no most high. Yeah, that's it. So you got a ruler in power that don't believe in the most high. Mm -hmm. In fact, he thinks he's the most high, right? That's right. That's right. That's what it tells you in Ezekiel the 28th chapter as well. Yeah. He, he He's wiser than Daniel through them different sorceries and witchcrafts. He mm -hmm. thinks that he's the most high, man. That's right. That's right. So that's why folly gets exalted at the level that it does, man. And righteousness just gets completely demonized mm -hmm. you know that's right that's right Go ahead. So, so, a definition for it as well for that, that makes this uh a land uh low this makes this a land full of gross darkness mm -hmm. too that's right that's you right. know go ahead at a definition for it you said um that psalms 14 that act like there is no power but them right it's definition perverse of a person or their actions showing a deliberate and obstinate desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often spite of the consequences. Mm -hmm. So this is a per perverse way. That, that the way they carry themselves, yep. it's, it's unacceptable in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. That's right. They still do it despite of the mm -hmm. consequences that the judgment is That's written. right. 
That's right. right. There's no heavenly father. Like they can't be touched because they haven't been touched yet. Right. That's right, bro. But we know because of their actions, they are going to be touched, though. In this land, you know? Can Come. I get this real quick, too, before we go? Please. Just to back him up? Please. Uh, this is uh, Psalms 50 and 16. It says, But unto the wicked, the most high said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction? And casts my words behind thee. So you have a ruler that's in power. He hates the instruction of the Most High. It tells you, I believe, in what Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, how a king that's governed over people, he, he must know the law himself. It's the spirit. And man. he also has to yeah. apply the law. That's right. Esau, he totally just disregards right. the law. That's right. That's right. He wants to create his own laws, man. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture says they're physicians of no value. Right. You know? That's right. Well, it's a low land, man. It's low in understanding, low in morals, low in spirit because they're completely adverse to the ways of the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Coming up with unrighteous decrees, just everything that's yeah. uh, perverse against the, the will of the Heavenly Father of how a society and the people are supposed to operate in the earth, man. That's right. That's right. Hey, this this uh, uh, just another example going into that. We was talking about it earlier. Look at this bill that Esau's trying to pass right now, the Trace Act. Yep. HR 6666. Six, six, six. Six. Yep. And we know the main ones that they're going to try to come up against is who? Jake. All right, those that are sitting in this low place, brought low in this low place, man. Okay, because what? That's the, what's, what's that trace act tied to? It's tied to the coronavirus. Right. Who was the modern day face of the coronavirus that Esau's putting as the face? Jake, it's right. you, Jakes, man. Right. Putting us in a low right. place. Putting it in that low place, man. Right. And they're going to try to come and kick your door or take you from your children and such, even if you was in an atmosphere of somebody that might have had that so called novelty virus, man. You know, use this, the National Guard to enforce right. it, too. That's right, bro. You know? And it's just that example, man, which shows you that this is captivity that we in. A very dark place. A very dark place in a low place, man. That's right. You know? Uh, was that it on that preset? Yes, no, 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 yeah. It was more to it. Okay, so a lot. No, no. Um, back in Isaiah 19 and 14. Somebody can hold Psalms 137.1. On. Uh, the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. As a drunken man. You break it down. Uh, as a drunken Please. man staggereth in his own vomit. So anyone's ever seen somebody drunk or been drunk, you've seen how someone looks, man. You're staggering, you're all discombobulated, you're confused, you damn near don't know where the hell you are, and that's that's the, the spirit of these people. You mm -hmm. know, this low ass land, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody just walking around bugged out on their own ideologies all over the place. There's millions of doctrines running around, means and beliefs. Everyone can do whatever they want, man. And we can see the results of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone looks drunk as hell off, off the doctrines of Esau. Do as thou wilt, spirit. That's right. You know, sure. everybody's bugged the hell out. Even when we see, you gave the example of that Edomite that came over camp yesterday. Mm -hmm. She ain't more than making no damn sense. No. But that's, that's everyone here in this low ass mm -hmm. land, you know? And, we're, and we are subject to being the midst of this That's crap, right. You know, because we're right. off, you know? That's right, bro. That, that, that was on that. Okay, Con, Con. Um, you got that, Psalms 137? Con. Con. Start at the top? Yeah, start at the top. But this is an example as the priest that made the mention. We're in the midst of this low place. We're low in this low place, man. You know, but we're rich. Like we read in Revelation, the third chapter, the rich sit in a low place. Okay. Captivity in this low place. Go ahead. Psalms 137 to 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sit. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat. Okay. And what does that go into? Places of drawing waters. Like you read it about in uh, that's Judges 5. Judges 5. Uh, Baba Kishaw, um, please hold that too. Judges 5 it, Yeah, Baba Kishaw, because it goes right into what, uh, what we're talking about as well. But it says, there we sat by the rivers of Babylon where we wept. All right, and it's alluding to us being in the captivity, man. All right, in this low place. And it's going to further expound on that when the brother continues to read. By the rivers of Babylon that we sat down, yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Mm -hmm. For there they for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. There we go. And again, we're sitting low. Okay, when you read this here in Isaiah uh, 137, this is an example of the rich sitting in a low place. All right, because there it said we sat by the rivers of Babylon, and then it goes to us being taken away captive. All right, now when you read this, this is in Psalms 137. This is a Psalm of David, man. Now, did this happen to David? No. He was a prophet, and he was prophesying about something that was going to befall upon us within the latter days. And it just so happened to be a series of events that we were brought low after, uh, after King David's rule. Okay? But right now, we're in the fulfillment of all of this in the worst captivity, the lowest place, in the lowest situation we've ever been in, man. You know? 
The so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans captivity in America is worse than any other captivity we've been in. Even Egypt, you know, because the time is greater right now and the Lord is getting ready to come back. You know, so most definitely we are in this low place right now, man. Now we sit in heavenly places within the body, being in unison with the with the body, with Yahweh Shah in the mist. Okay? But in America, over here, and not even just America, where where you brothers are scattered at is low. But America is the chief of that low place, that low land, that place of traffic, Kanaan. And we're here, man. Because the scriptures say, uh, gross darkness that covers the earth and gross darkness of people in Isaiah mm -hmm. 60. So, like the brother said, it's, it's, the whole earth is dark, but this is like the epicenter. This, of it, that's right. You know? That's right. Beautiful. That's it on that Psalms 137. Because when you continue to go down, it goes into how we were captive under the daughter of Edom, right. which is the daughter of Babylon. You know? But another example of us being in that low place, um, Isaiah 52, you got that one? Oh, I'm sorry. Judges 5 and 11. That's what I wanted first. And then Isaiah 52. This is uh, Judges 5 and 11. It says, They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing waters. In the place of drawing waters. And that's significant for uh, captivity. Mm -hmm. That's what that's alluding to. Any of y'all brothers know the precept in Joshua where it goes into how um, we, we had those Canaanites as drawers of water? Let's see. I, uh, let's see. We'll find it. It's in Joshua. Oh, that's it right here. Hey, just real quick. I just got a quick precept before we continue in that. Joshua chapter 9, just to prove that that's going into captivity. Because again, in Psalms 137, it says, there we sat by the rivers of Babylon. Okay. And that goes into drawing, pr preparing for drawing water. Okay. This is Joshua chapter 9. And when you read this, it just goes into pretty much as we made particular Canaanites our servants and the certain duties that they had been given as they were brought, as we had placed them in captivity. Okay, so this is Joshua chapter 9, verse 18. And the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had swore unto them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. All right, and that was an alliance that we made with those Canaanites when you read about that. And we couldn't do anything to them afterward, man. Okay? And we all and we had a pact with them later on, which we weren't supposed to make pacts with the heathen. Okay? But through the spirit and that example, that actually happened, man. You know? Matter of fact, we had an allegiance with um with Tyre and Zidon. Okay? Those are Canaanites. Right. You know? But just in that example, it continues to go on. It says in verse 20, this will we do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swear unto them. And the princess said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation as the princess had promised. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that precept out to show as we read that Judges 5 and 11 going into the place of drawing waters. That's significant for captivity. And that's what that's talking about, being in that low place. Right. Okay. Go ahead. You can um, start from the top on that one again. Okay. For sure. Well, we're rich in faith, and that's why we rehearse the righteous acts, man, because we know we've been stirred back up to remembrance of, right. our, of our rich heritage, that's of right. our rich legacy and heritage, mm -hmm. you know? That's right, brother, and that's beautiful you said that, because it's going to go into that, what we're about to read right now. Okay. Like in Judges 5, verse 11, mm -hmm. it says, They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, Right, we were delivered from the noise of archers. Remember, man, it was times we was getting killed Ooh. off and the rest that didn't die were brought into captivity, you know? And that's a prophecy saying that the deliverance is going to take forth too in the midst of our captivity. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. we're going to be delivered out of a low place, mm -hmm. you know, out that's of right. a lower state. That's right, brother. God. It says, that's why, too, if I could say this, uh, what, what's that? Wisdom of Solomon 5, they're going to be amazed at the strangers of right. salvation because right. we've been at the lowest level, mm -hmm. you know, but we about to be exhausted right. at the That's latter right. end, you know? About to about to arise up. Right. Okay, as it's about to say right yep. here. Yep. Because what did the Lord do after he went into this place that we were delivered to in captivity? He had rose up judges, man. Rose up judges to get us out of this place. And as the brother alluded to, Yahweh Shai is going to come as that supreme judge and deliver us. Right. But also, too, even before Yahweh Shai came back, as we were in captivity, who did the Lord raise up? His prophets, man. His, prophets, yep. His judges. You know, go ahead, brother Salakia. Huh. Uh, back in Judges 5 and little verse 11, it says, there, uh, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts 
of your house. Well, it's what we're doing. Go ahead. Even righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his village in Israel. Go ahead. Then shall the people of Yahweh go down to the gates. Go ahead. Awake, awake. There we go. That's what I wanted. Awake, awake. Okay, and that's what we were in the process of doing, man. Every time we were brought low, there was a time when we would awake out of that dark state and we would be risen up. Okay? And that's why I went to Isaiah 52 as well. But we can continue on this one and then we can jump to that. Judges 5 and 12. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake. Utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive. All right, arise, Barak. And Barak was a judge, man. You know, even Deborah. You know, Deborah had her role that the Heavenly Father had set her in, and it was a beautiful role, man. Yeah. And with those two around that time, that was needed for us to rise up. Because with Deborah, what? He said, Deborah, sing a song. You know? Now, of course, you know, when you liken the elect, uh, you know, the, the, the Lord likens the elect into a woman, a calmly and delicate woman. All right, and what are we doing? We're in the process of singing that song. Okay, and what did he say with Barak? He says, Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive. Lead thy captivity captive. All right, that lowest state that's taking place. Hey, it's a paradigm shift that's getting ready to take place. And it's being uttered. Everything that's happening right now. All right. Everything that's being uttered is coming to pass out of the lips of the prophets, man. OK, what does Barak mean? It means blessed, you know. So the Heavenly Father is raising up his blessed ones to sing this song. All right. To lead captivity captive. I got a precept. Come Baba Kishore. This is Isaiah 61 and 1. It says the spirit of the Lord power is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim, so like you, to proclaim liberty to the captives mm -hmm. and the openings of the prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all of those that mourn. Hey, which is the gospel, by the way. Mm -hmm. all right, a, little, a lot of people, when they look at the gospel, they love to take out the, the, the day of vengeance. That's part of the gospel, man. Right. Because what did he, what Isaiah say? The Lord had had um, ordained him, all right, to, look, to be a prophet unto the nations and to bring good tidings. Right, kind. That's that's the good news. The gospel, yeah. You know, the, the 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 acceptable year and the day of vengeance. Okay, and the day of vengeance just so happens to be the time where we're going to lead captivity captive, man. Right. You know, and that's going to happen when Yahweh comes back right. and arises us up, man. Okay, well, it started with the Lord putting his word out there and rising men up. Right. And the effect of that is going to be to a physical deliverance that's going to take place from this low ass land that we're in right now. Right. From this low place. Men singing that new song in that lower state. That's right. You know? That's right. Con, con. And Isaiah 52. Because the truth shall set you free. That's what the scripture says as well. Because mm -hmm. we've been captive even in our mind and our spirit. It's right. been broken down, that's not right. knowing who we were, not knowing what standard of, of what to follow. Mm hmm. But through that word, through that new song, man, we have a legacy. We we have a goal in mind, so to speak. So that's freedom. The, the truth shall set you free. You know, come on, come we're not uh, basically uh, 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 you know at a loss of self esteem because we're supposed to know who we are now, man. Mm -hmm. You know that gives you a certain uh, level of of honor, you know, and dignity, like knowing your your your, your heritage to a certain degree. You know, come on, come on. go ahead. I got a quick precept. Jeremiah five and five. I will get me unto great men and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have together broken the yoke and burst the bonds. You know, and that's what's taking place. Okay. Hey, captivity is being led captive. And it starts with the, the, the joining of the brethren coming together. Hey, man, you, hey, you did a beautiful lesson going into that, man. How the power that we have is like a weapon of mass destruction. Yep. You know, this is a huge fear with Esau with us coming together and arising up. That's a weapon of mass destruction for real, man. Because that's the downfall of the greatest kingdom ever to exist on the planet Earth, man. You know, with us coming together, breaking the yokes, arising up, man, out of this low place. You know? Hey, the scriptures say we rich. Keep going into it. And it's going to be proven and shown, <laughs> manifest that we rich. Like the brother alluded to Wisdom of Solomon 5. Yeah. It's going to be a public declaration that's going to be stated. You know, that's going to be shown, actually. Who the rich is, man. Right. You know? I had a priest for you since you said that. Come, come. Psalms chapter 23, verses 4 and 5. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, spirit, yeah. I will fear no evil, for there are with me. 
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Mm -hmm. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, man, it says, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So as you in the midst of this, okay, there's a list of things when King David is talking right as he as he's speaking right there, going to a list of reasons why he ain't supposed to be fearful in that low place. Why he's supposed to keep his confidence, man, because the Heavenly Father had laid us a table, a prepared a table for us, man. The holy um, the, the, the holy communion coming together. All right, the heavenly places that we were sat in in Ephesians, the second chapter. Okay, this is a table that's being prepared right in the midst of our enemies. But, hey, we eating good, man. Right. Not having to worry about everything that's around us, you know. Yeah. Was there more on that uh, one? No, 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 no. And we sure. come together yeah. as an altar to give those sacrifices that are pleasing right. to the Most High. Right. Because we don't have to do the actual physical uh, altar to prepare the sacrifice it's all spiritual so mm -hmm. when you have our brothers like we are now breaking bread this is an altar we're making those sacrifices to the lord that's right that's what's covering us to the, through, through this low land as well that's you know? right bro yeah this is that, that verse it says that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me that's what it is we, even though we in this mm -hmm. low land in captivity that goodness and mercy still follows because he's returning to his people that's right we remembering who we are and he's showing us the ways to please him for us to, to have a chance to receive salvation you know, that mercy that was promised, you know, even though we getting our heads busted right now, physically, but spiritually, we balling, man. Yeah. That's right, bro. I got a precept. This Ephesians 2 and 4, but the Most High, who was rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the Mashiach. Again, those heavenly places, they uh, us coming together, you know, get ye unto great men. That's what's taking place. It says, by grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit. We were raised up from what? A low place that we were in. You know, through Yahweh Shai, we were raised back up. Okay, as those judges were always raised back up around the time of captivity. Okay, we're being raised back up because we're those judges that are coming back in this day. All right, and as we're being raised up together, what's taking place? And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And that's what we're doing, man, sitting in heavenly places. All right? To the average Joe, when they, if they were to look at you, whether you're studying with brethren or whatever, it would look like something just normal to them. Okay, these are just guys reading the Bible. Right. No, this is heavenly places that we're in right now, man. The right. mentality that we have, we got the formula to life. Right. You know? Through heavenly. This, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, through this word, we're climbing out of that pit of death that's that right. we've been tossed in, man, through the spirit. That's right. Because America's a pit, man. Like, that's why in Ezekiel 37, it says prophesy to these dead bones, these dry bones, man. That's right. But that word, it gave us the spirit of life. So now that we have life, we're trying to climb up out of this pit. That's we're right, in a pit bro. of death, man. Mm -hmm. Before we got this word, before we got the new song. In the congregation of dead. That's kind, right. Kind, kind. Yeah, yeah, he the one that out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's right, bro. Go ahead, huh? Ephesians 2 and 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness toward us through Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And those ages to come that our fathers wrote about, it's being fulfilled right now. These are the ages to come that we were going to rise up out of the state that we were in. Through Yahweh Shai first and foremost, of course. But we're in that time of rising up out of this place that's mingled in perversion. All right? Us being in this low place. Again, earlier, it said the rich sit in a low place. Now we're in the time right now where those riches are going to be brought forth and they're going to be seen. All right, they're going to be made manifest as is written. Again, it says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Okay, so those riches of his grace are being displayed unto us right now, man. You know, it's going to be shown who the rich are that sit in that low place. It's being shown. All right, the ones that's only able to receive it are the elect ultimately, man. You know? And um, that Isaiah 52. Does anybody got any precepts? Nah, anything? we can go ahead. Just go. With okay. You, what you want to. Come, come, come. I should through the spirit. Yeah, I should break it up. This is, uh, yeah. Isaiah you still recording? You're still recording. Yeah. Okay. Top. Yeah, you can start from the top. And if any, don't got, nobody got anything after this. We can really, we can end it. Well, we'll just go through the spirit because I, I got a list. Oh, sure. But we probably okay. went through most of everything. That's on. It's all through the spirit. Just, okay. Just go for ahead. sure. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I had one, but if it. If it doesn't swing that way. I got a few, but if it don't swing, we'll just roll. Hey, man, yeah. kind of. We, hey. All right. Sound like we locked and loaded. Uh, Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awake, awake. 
Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. And that's really the same thing that it was told in Judges the fifth chapter. Awake, awake. Mm -hmm. You said what? Put on that. That's right. That's right, bro. Gone, gone. Beautiful. And that's what, that's what we're doing through the spirit, man. We awaken out of this place. And um, when you go into that, I, I remember I was, um, I forgot what I was reading. But when you read that in Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, it's an allegory to us being in a low place and raising up from that dust. Because when you sit low, that's a state of mourning. All right. One of our one of our customs that we had as a people was when we was in a state of mourning, we would sit in the dirt and we would cast dust and ashes over our head. OK, so when you read that in Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, it says, awake, awake, put on thy beautiful garments. OK, all that dust in that state of mourning is being shed it off. OK, and that newer man is being put on and it's being revealed in these in these last days. And it's hard to see about these people out here that have a very polluted mindset, man. But we have the unction, man, so we can see it. OK, go ahead, brother. Like in the middle of. Isaiah 52 and 1, it says, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the, un and the unclean. Mm -hmm. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake thyself from the dust. Get your ass up. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Shake thyself from the dust. You ask me what you'll say? Well, I would just, uh, it made me think about the lingo here in Texas. Like when somebody get beat up, they like, man, he got dust. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah we yeah. we got dusted off, man. Dust, yeah. off. <laughs> dust, off. Yeah. dust yourself off and try again. Yeah. Yep. You know, and it's the last time, man. So, hey, we trying. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful, man. There's a lot of dusting going on. We trying to get the dust off our shoulder, all of that's that right. weakness, you know? That's, that's right, brother. Beautiful, man. A lot of that pollution. Like the Lord says if the, a, a certain city don't receive you, man, what? Well, shake the dust shake in your, the your, dust your feet. Off. That's right. You know? <laughs> Saying the Lord for the dust America off, man. That's right. That's right. Beautiful, man. <laughs> God, go ahead, bro. Verse 2, it says, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. And if I could say this too, the dust that represents all that confusion we that's were talking right. about earlier, that's man. Right. That's because right. Because the wicked rulership that's mm -hmm. in power, that's exalt folly, that's why everybody's in a state of perplexity. Yeah. Everybody's looking for answers, man. That's right. Nobody don't know what the hell's going on. They're waiting for the government to pass bills, which that's through the spirit. We was at camp last night mm. and they uh passed that bill for the second stimulus. Right. So oh, of course man. Trump has to sign it and all of that, but it's just gonna bring a a, a greater state of confusion, mm -hmm. hyperinflation, that's right, bro. more uncertainty. You know, mm -hmm. you can't put a Band-Aid on a 12-gauge wound, man. That's America's right. through. Scripture says we would have healed Babylon, you know what I'm saying, but she can't be healed. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, so even with this whole stimulus check and all this other kind of stuff that Jake is is leaning towards, which if we get the if you get the stimulus check, you know, hey, call all your hobbies from your side, just use it for what's needed for the, you know, for the exactly. brotherhood and for mm -hmm. things that you need. But yeah, for the most part, the, the rest of Jake are leaning upon Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you gotta awake unto that's why Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah said, man, they 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 they, they, they take counsel, but not of me. Mm -hmm. You know, but us through the Spirit, we're taking counsel of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. We're awakening to righteousness. We're awakening to trusting the Lord mm -hmm. in all scenarios and situations. That's right. You know, so, that's right, bro. Nah, all good. Go ahead. I <clears throat> all right, verse two it says, "Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down on Jerusalem." Arise and sit down. Don't mean sit back down in that low place. No. We read earlier in Jeremiah 5 and 5, it says, I will get me unto great men, you know, sitting together in those heavenly places. Okay, so you're arising and you're sitting in the rightful spot that the Heavenly Father ultimately had established for you. We just had to go through this process of being low and tormented. One, because we went off, but namely it's because it was ultimately the program of the Heavenly Father. Well, now we're in this process of arising up, like we read in Judges 5. In the places of drawing water, there they'd rehearse the righteous act. And right afterward, he had told the judges to awake and rise and lead captivity captive. And that's what's happening right now. Okay? Come on. This is Zechariah chapter 2. I read verse 6 and 7. It says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith, uh, saith Yahweh. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord, because we've been spread, we've been scattered due to the curses. It says, deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, so that's, you know, going into, uh, you know, awaken, you know, uh, 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 what's that, Micah 2 and 10, 
the rise in your heart. Mm-hmm. This is in your wrist. That's right. You know. That's right. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And it said, it said the daughter of Babylon. When you read that there, right. man, mm-hmm. it goes to show you it's not talking about ancient Babylon. It says the land of the north, okay, but it's talking about Edom, right. namely when you go into it according to prophecy, mm-hmm. you know, and you know that by reading Psalms one thirty seven, where it considers the daughter of Edom being the daughter of Babylon, <laughs> okay. It's crazy because at this time, if I'm not mistaken, um, Zechariah was it was was he preaching? Was he preaching at the time of uh, was it Zechariah and Haggai? It was Zechariah and Haggai, yeah. And they already left Babylon. Yep, that's right. Ooh, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? That's so a great. This, point. That's how you know this is talking about. Yeah, here. Right. That's right, bro. Because we were under captivity under the Persian and the Medes around that time. Right. Yep. You know, that's a great point right there. And a lot of people that present their arguments. For going into stuff like this, they don't understand that history. They haven't been into it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you can't go into the scriptures without going into the history. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. Right. You mm-hmm. see, the, 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 like uh, Apostle Elder Gabal always say, you have to know the history to understand the mystery. Right. Yep. That's right. You see? And what, you, and what y'all just went into just in this last 60 seconds trumps everything that somebody has that's not willing to dig. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, yeah, man. It's a like study to show ourselves to be approved, man. You got to get into this thing, man. Mm-hmm. You can't just read a precept and then just take it for what you want to use it. But no, no, no. It's a his- it, things had to build up for that understanding to be available. Like, this stuff had to happen. You know, people just throw blanket statements out there and haven't Googled nothing. Like, <laughs> like come on, bro. It's so much more to it than what you think you got out of it. You know? No, this is this is very well put together, you know? Good, good. You know? Beautiful, beautiful. Um, was there more on that precept right nope, there? That was it. Con, con, con. Let's jump back to that Isaiah 52. And whatever precepts brothers got, let's let them fly. That's pretty much all I have. Uh, let me talk about Isaiah 52 and 2. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Captivity, man. Leading captivity captive. Loose thyself from the bands on thy neck. Get your ass up out of that low place, man. And this is the time. You know? Hey, we keep saying it. The rich sit in a low place, but that don't change the fact that we rich. Mm -hmm. And those riches are being shown right now, man. And it's going to be made manifest physically when that deliverance happens, man. Okay? If I could get this real quick, because the riches is talking about this knowledge. That's mm-hmm. why the scripture says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time, right. the strength of thy salvation. Come, come. This is Romans 11 and 33. Mm-hmm. It says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the most high. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Mm-hmm. It says, for who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor? And the uh, way that we get closer to the mind of the Lord is through the word. You got to know the word of the Most High to know the Most High. That's right. How are you going to proclaim to know the Most High if you don't know the word of the Most High? Right. That's right. Or proclaim to love the Most High, serve the Most High, but you don't even know the word God. and what he expects for you to do. Right. You know? God. So that's, that's right. how we have the true riches, man, mm-hmm. in this low place. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. Uh, in the two, it says, uh, Isaiah 52 and 2, it says, O captive daughter of Zion, for thus saith Jehovah, Ye have sold yourselves for not, and ye shall be redeemed without money. There we go. We shall be redeemed. Okay? Being risen up, and that rising up is going to be a process of redemption after that rise up, man. Because as we're rising up, you know, hey, through Yahweh's resurrection, of course, he died. But the thing, the more important thing is he resurrected from the dead. And that way we was able to obtain this knowledge and these mysteries, paradise. Okay? As the scriptures say. All right. And later on that with that knowledge, we were going to have the tools, what we need in order to rise up as we're rising up. We were going to know what we needed to do in order to be redeemed, man. You know, mm-hmm. go ahead. Huh? Redeemed without money, too. Without that money. Shows it ain't like this. Yeah. It says riches shall not profit in the day of affliction. Hey, I'm loosely beautiful. paraphrasing, man. Beautiful. So the Lord, ultimately, you just got to have been chosen from the foundation of the earth to mm-hmm. receive mercy. That's right. And Come we're on. trying to put ourselves in the best position to receive those mercies. You know, based on the instructions that we've been given and our own lot and measurement of faith, you know? That's right. Mm-hmm. I got a precept. Go ahead. Come on, come on. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold Beautiful. from your vain conversation received by the tradition of uh, from your fathers. Without money, man. And money is a corruptible thing. Not that money's wicked because right. the scriptures say money's a defense. Right, right, right. But our heavenly father is a power 
all right, who's rich has surpassed anything that we can that we could even try to quantify in our <clears> minds. <throat> you know, he's far more superior than that. I was like, think you know? about it. He promised us a kingdom. He didn't promise us money. Right, right. That's right. <laughs> Shit, at least I can give you some money. Yeah. The Lord yeah. promised a kingdom. That's right. Com- two completely different things. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Chat more on that. One? Yeah. Verse nineteen it says, "But with the precious blood of Hamashiach, mm-hmm. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot." Um, that was, that was God. Well, that's beautiful that you said that because you know Yahushua's his blood is what redeemed us. That's the money. You know, that's God. the money. You read it in Revelation. It talks about how we were we were covered in his blood and through his blood we were made white. That's those beautiful garments. And then life is in the blood too. That's right. Because mm-hmm. through Yahushua, that's how we receive life. That's right. We were in a dead state spiritually, but through mm-hmm. Yahweh Shah, which is the word, that's how we're able to live, man. That's right. That's right. You know, that's how yeah. we're able to have the, the, the ability to arise out of this low place. Mm-hmm. You know? That's right, bro. Because that's another uh, a way of, of saying uh, to make alive when someone's quickening it, you rise mm-hmm. up. Because Lord, when he did miracles, he said, what did he say? Rise up. Yeah, okay. always. Always. He always So did. through the spirit, yeah. like the calling for the elect is to rise up, man, yeah. out of that dead state. That's right. You know? That's right. Shit, when that when when that um harlot was getting ready to be stoned, shit, she was in the dirt sitting there. Yeah. You know, and he said, "All right, get up, sin no more." Right. And we all know who that represents spiritually. That represents us. That's yep. right. You know, yep. beautiful man. Anybody got any more precepts? That's all I had. Man. I I had one. Come, yeah. come, and that's it on that Isaiah fifty two. Oh, yeah. That's cool on that. Uh, did we read? Isaiah, excuse me, Hosea thirteen. No, no, go ahead, bro. You, you got, got it. it. Okay. Hosea 13 and 9. Break it down. Kind of, it says, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. So the worshiping of the follow, of these other gods that our people have followed after, you know, uh, spiritual fornication is what has caused our people to, you know, fall away from that heritage. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Hosea, the first chapter goes into that. But it says, but in me is thine help. You know, so really <clears throat> Israel has, has pretty much self-destructed. Or deconstructed uh, themselves, man. Because all we had to do was follow after the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, which you see us doing now, which is that rising up out of that confusion or that dust. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's it. Yeah, kind. Okay, kind, kind. Beautiful. Any more precepts? Anyone? Kind, kind. Well, that's a bet, man. Well, hey, man, a lot more precepts came out than expected, but that's how it usually happens, right? Yep. You know, but um, hey, Lord's what I was edifying. Okay, want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom. Shalom.